Ah. Hoor je mij, Frauke? Ja, yeah, I hear you. Okay. All right, all right. So today we would like to introduce our Sonic Cheese project. It's a project in progress. So instead of our sound tests, we introduce the concepts as many more people have become interested and have joined our team to expand the project for which we recently received some startup funds. We briefly introduce ourselves. Me, I'm uh, Frau Kwiarda. Thank you for having us, uh, by the way. Um, I am a sound artist and museologist, a researcher and collaborator in various multidisciplinary projects in which I actively and innovatively involve other artists and partners. And the collaborations result in combinations of new acoustic and electronic instruments, performances, and multimedia artworks in sometimes real-time interactive systems. My aim is to continuously expand my knowledge, seeking innovative solutions to social issues. Uh, my name is Judith van der Elst, and I'm in, trained and work as an archaeologist in the U.S. Southwest, where I specialized in humanistic approaches of geospatial technologies. And working since at the intersection of science, art, and technology with a great interest in land-based knowledge systems uh, and embodied practices. Um, and I have co-designed and participated in community and art science projects in the US and in Europe. Um, so this story starts uh, with Judith, who for a while worked as a herder and cheesemaker and learned about the curious fact that the taste of cheese can be influenced by playing different music during the ripening process. This raised some interesting questions and a desire to actually test this in a transdisciplinary way. The importance of bacteria in our lives is more and more recognized. So how do, does the fact that they change their behavior in response to sound and music influence all of our lives? So today we discuss three main topics of the project we are developing, in which we seek to explore these questions from a curious mindset. First, the cheese body, uh, a new life form as a mimetic of the animal stomach. Then we'll talk about the atmospheric terroir as the source of sound of embodiment. And then we talk a little bit more about bacteria and sound, focused on the instruments we are designing to tune into bacterial communication. So for centuries, humans and ruminants have lived symbiotically together and they, goats, sheep and cows primarily, have fermented plant material into milk in their special stomachs. How we figured out to make cheese is still not certain, but cheese curds were probably found in the stomachs of the little animals. Rennet, originally made from little goat's stomach, is used in the cheese making process to set the curdling process in motion. Our cheese making can then be thought of mimicking the process that is not naturally happening in the stomach. We have created and reproduced the conditions in our cheese cellars. But in our project, we like to think of cheeses as very special bodies in which we can learn more about the unique relationships within and between symbionts, especially the bacteria. So bacterially rich milk is a necessity for great cheese. So even in the artisanal cheese world, we have integrated technological innovations to extract the milk from the animals and make our work a little easier. A major player or players in the whole process, however, are the bacteria that convert the fresh milk into milk products. Lactococcus lactis is a major player in this fermentation process, making the milk curdle. The advantages are clear. Foods are safe to eat, they last longer and often taste better. Lactococcus has changed genetically over the years of human intervention but what's still special about them is that they can live both in oxygen-rich outdoor environments and oxygen-poor stomachs where they do their work. So we would like to learn more about Lactococcus and all the other bacteria in the wild and how we can live together in a multi-dimensional ways. So it's not known for certain, but assumed that Lactococcus lives on many plant materials, as do many other microbial organisms that get ingested into the animal body during daily dietary rounds. 
Goats especially are very selective when it comes to their diet. And so they take up a meal that is highly diverse as the basis of the milk they produce. They then need ample time to digest it all into their stomach region. They do so in preferred places in the outdoors. So it begs the question, what else is in their environment that they are taking up during this cycle? The air that they breathe, the atmosphere in which they ruminate. So terroir is a concept in artisanal food cultivation, mostly associated with wine, but also with cheese. And it indicates the local conditions in the process, the soil, geology, climate, and the human directed fermenting processes. Atmospheric terroir is then part of the environment in which the milk and cheese naturally come to be and result in rich milk. In the cheese cellar, the darkness of the animal's stomach is somehow mimicked. The animal in its atmosphere is not. Therefore, we believe that since the bacteria is known to respond to music, the cheese soundtrack should be close to or related to the natural environment in which this process naturally takes place. Starting this process of sound design, um, we explore the environment in which the current project will start. This is in the northern Netherlands, a region that is rich in natural heritage. It's the, called the Wadden region. One of the largest wetlands in the world and listen, listed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. It's also in a region rich in resources that are important in the global economy, especially energy, and which is natural gas and currently an important region for wind energy harvesting. While animals are grazing in this open terrain, our sound design research plays into these dynamics and we will work with atmospheric uh, meteorological variables, temperature, precipitation, sun hours, humidity, wind and atmospheric pressure. The ob observations of these variables are collected highly accurately throughout the day and processed in real time. Thus, the sonification process translates numerical weather data into sonic outputs. In this project, we already work with several partners that pick up specific aspects of the project. Originated within the Art and Music School of the Hansa University of Applied Sciences, the project is part of the Sense Ecology and the Turbine Place project and their student, student bodies. Furthermore, we work with the experimental gardens of Terra MBO, educating a new crop of Hori cultural students and their art-focused program. Egbert Tervain, a goat farmer and cheesemaker, also herds his animals here. And together we are working on novel setups for cheese ripening, preparing an old World War II bunker on site as ripening room, as well as thinking how to involve a larger community by setting up site-specific sound installations, unique terrars of local weather station and customized cheese ripening boxes. For the sonification process, I contacted Centre Henri Pousseur in Liège, it's in Belgium, a center for research, production and performance for works of electronic music and mixed music. And Patrick Delge, computer scientist, is helping me with this uh, sonification process. This slide is a picture I took when I did uh, our experimental indoor setup of our system. We used a weather station kindly lent by Critech and Co, an institute that provides measurement instruments for the environment. But then how do you choose what kind of sonic output you want? We will start working with amplitudes and wavelength in sound, working with ultrasound and infrasound and the rhythm linking specific sonic parameters to the different weather observations, whereby we develop an analogous system between parameters of weather data and sonic parameters. For example, comparing changes in wind data with changes in amplitudes and or wavelengths. And in this way, other data are also converted. And then next to this, we are analyzing the taste in relation to the sound. And after this first process, we know the kind of taste we are after. 
we know what kind of sound we want. We can start creating site-specific instruments, resonators for ripening the cheese. So to create specific microclimates in which the cheeses can ripen, we work together with Eva van Strien, and she's a transdisciplinary eco-designer who with her project, a terroir communicator, seeks to enable specific microclimates to zoom in to sensory processes that otherwise passes by unnoticed. Terroir communicator builds on earlier work by Van Strien, Air Culture, a project together with Sarah Duhair, in which they focus on plant communication as a starting point to question the value of air in our technologically enhanced environments. The sonic cheese instrument that we will collaboratively develop is a specific application of the terroir communicator to tune in to the sounds of life's fundamentals. And we first need to find the mathematical formula for the glass terroirs, the resonators. And nowadays in architecture, resonant cavities inspired by the Helmholtz resonator are often still used to reduce sound transmission, sound attenuation. We mainly want to use them as a frequency fil filter for filtering the real time soundscape and to tune into and activate the bacteria's developments inside a cheese. The resonance cavities look like spherical container with a small hole below the resonant frequency. Sound cannot propagate in the spherical structure of the resonator. Creating site-specific instruments or resonators for capturing the weather, they can have different forms and volumes for ripening the sonic cheese. Shown here is a test model glass to our communicator to which different attachment speakers, et cetera, can be configured. That this model reminds us of a stomach is a happy coincidence. The sound composition will be tested within this model first. After testing, we will together with Eva, create new customized designs to optimize the different sound compositions. And later the cheese will be placed within the terroir communicator. We will start with weather patterns that have been converted into sound waves. We can then weave them back into organic field recordings or real-time site-specific environmental sounds. Sounds with which crickets communicate, bird communication, these kinds of sounds of communicative processes in different frequency spectra, weaving in and out of each other from the constantly evolving soundscape, balancing between the known and unknown combinations. The environment will we assume result in specific patterns, rhythms that are loud at one time, but subdued in other, leaving space for response. So what is known, but not widely acknowledged, is that bacteria in our and other bodies respond to sound waves and change their behavior as a consequence. What we know is that because of this, cheese that is ripened in sonic environments will result in different tasting cheeses. With this project, we would like to make this more widely known. What we also would like is that with this extra dimension in the artisanal ripening process, we not only diversify taste, but probably also biodiversity. Taste in this project is an end result of a very interesting process. What we know is that we designed the soundtrack for this process and we can test the effect of those tracks. What we would like to understand and listen into also is the process of these changes. How do bacteria respond? How does this change in behavior take place? When the sound is subdued, do bacteria also respond in mechanical signaling? Some recent research has given us reason to believe they do. It would be fantastic to not only taste their behavior, but get a more in-depth notion of the dialogue that takes place, maybe through the design of novel microphones. So our curiosity is piqued and we're looking forward to um, further our uh, project. And so that was what we have to say today. So thank you all for listening and we'll welcome any questions. Thank you. Thank you.
there any questions in the room? Yeah, come on up. Thank you so much. That's uh, really, really interesting. Uh, I took this class at my school that we learn about terroir through wine. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering how, uh, I guess the idea of terroir is so linked to the natural uh, geo um, location and also the natural soundscape and the climate. And this is, I, I'm uh, getting that, you, uh, this project is creating a almost artificial sonic soundscape for the cheese to ripen in it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm really intrigued by this idea of atmospheric terroir and how you think, you know, uh, of this like human, almost human intervention of the natural soundscape and how this almost like contradicts the original idea of terroir. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it somehow you, you you will taste at the end also the landscape. Uh, actually, what we would like to try even, but that's at the end that we want to see if 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 if, if we do know um, on what kind of sounds those bacteria will react. Um, um, maybe the bacteria will will respond, so they will create their own. A natural sound environment inside this terrain. That's the um, uh, that, that that would be nice to discover. We don't know uh, yet. No, we don't. We don't know. And 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 so the the original tests that that were done with the cheeses were done. Um, you know, Western music mostly. Uh, classical music so we know they're responding to it so we would like to move more into how, how can we translate data that is out there um, into soundtracks but we're also thinking of how can we after that um, do more with the sounds that we can capture in a different way, for instance, by placing different um, instruments in the landscape or facilitating sounds. Do you want to say something more about that, Frauke, on how we can capture sound in different now, ways? It, of course, or the, the, we start with um, ripening those cheeses in, 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 in really uh, artisanal boxes, wooden boxes, and, and we, 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 we um, translate the sound of, 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 of the weather into now yeah, pure sound, maybe sinus tones, and then we see uh, how the the, 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 the the cheese will taste. And then what would be perfect that you make these uh, um, these glass uh, stomachs where the cheese can be ripened in. If if you really can find, if you really can tune into those cheese and those bacteria, because that's what Helmholtz resonators are doing. If you have the right measurements um, you can keep the right white wavelength in sight and then you have already an instrument and that's really an acoustic instrument actually you don't need then uh, uh then then the, the 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 data anymore of the weather in a way so and of course you can play with uh with other kind of instruments with maybe with kites, with strings, who also vibrate by the wind, and which you, this sound you can put into the cheese. Yeah, you, we can go really wild. Um, you can make a lot of wind instruments, which has already have been done before. Uh, thinking of, uh, um, of the Aeolian um, uh, wind harps. So yeah, there are a lot of <laughs> possibilities. <laughs> 